Tonight. Now the cookies. This is the Chico Steve. Lesson three. Warfare prayer and the gates of hell. Warfare prayer and the gates of hell. And you can go to Ephesians 6 and 10. Are we learning something on the spiritual warfare? Amen. Amen. Everybody is involved in warfare. You believe that? Amen. Amen. Everybody is involved in warfare daily. Warfare is not just casting out demons and dealing with the occult. Spiritual warfare is your whole life. Come on. Say your whole life. Whole life. Say it like you mean it. Whole life. Whole life. Yeah, spiritual warfare is your whole life. It, inclu it includes casting out demons and dealing with witchcraft and the occult. But those are not the main problems for Christians. The main problem is living day by day in victory. Amen. You believe that? Mm -hmm. yeah. We have battles every day. In our last session, we said that all prayer is to be done in the spirit. Spiritual warfare is a warfare in the spirit realm. You cannot fight the enemy with your flesh. Right. We understand that. Yes, sir. We cannot fight the enemy in the flesh. All through the book of Ephesians, Paul emphasized that we are people of the spirit. Mm -hmm. Say, I am spirit. I am spirit. We are spirit people. The spirit that lives in us needs a housing. Amen. To be able to be uh, mobile here on earth. Amen? Amen. No, we're not going to go into Scientology, but what I want to want to share is the spirit man needs a container to be able to stay here on, on earth to minister the gospel. Amen? Yes, sir. Notice again what he said, said in Ephesians 6.18 and we'll get there in a bit that all prayer must be done in the spirit. Amen. Mm -hmm. Now when we start to when we start to pray uh, uh, we begin in the flesh. Amen? Mm -hmm. Right? Yes, we do. <clears throat> Come on, somebody talk to me. Yes, sir. We be begin in the flesh, and as we, we progress, as we uh, adore God, as we praise God, as we, we worship God, we, we, we move from the, the natural into the supernatural part, the spiritual Amen. part. Amen? Amen? Do we understand that? Yes, sir. All the pieces of weapons that are mentioned in, in previous verses, which we'll read right now in Ephesians 6 and 10 are functions of the Holy Ghost. And why is this? Because the enemy we are facing is a spirit world enemy. Mm. Spirit, right now as, as we sit in this class there are, there are uh, uh, God's angels and, and, and Satan's angels fighting <coughs> with mm -hmm. each other. Mm -hmm. Come on. And, and you know and we already know that God's angels win. Amen. Regardless yeah. no matter what the circumstance is, God's angels win. The, the challenge is for Christians, for believers, is to allow God's angels to keep the victory for us. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. Right now you might be distracted with a text. You might be distracted with, with a recipe. You might be distracted with a, a let go a shopping online. A, you might be distracted with thinking about... Uh, what you need to do after you might be distracted with something that you should have done before you got here maybe maybe uh, you're distracted uh, because you forgot a piece of paper for your taxes I don't know what it is but during this time the distraction will will cause us to be preoccupied mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. for our spirits not to receive so we must cast down Amen. Everything that exalts itself, everything that raises itself against the knowledge of God. Amen? Amen. Are we okay with it? Amen. The kingdom we are bringing in is a spirit kingdom. Amen? So we are to pray, speak, and live in the spirit. I'll say that again. We are to pray, speak, and live in the spirit. Now, is the F word spirit? No. Mm -mm. It's carnal. 
right? Right. And why do I use that? Is because a lot of times when we get uh, rubbed the wrong way, uh, uh, the the number one finger comes up, mm. or or a, or a bad thought comes up, and that and and that mind is processing in the carnal nature. I'm trying to teach this real slow right now. Now let's go to Ephesians 6 and 10. The battle against evil. Now the battle isn't against your ex-wife, your, your fiancé, your bride, your newlywed, uh, your neighbor, your, your, your boss, your, your co-workers. Uh, the battle is not the ministry leader that, that you work alongside. The battle is not uh, even the wino that may, might walk in uh, church on a Wednesday or a, or a Sunday. Amen. The battle right. is against principalities, mm -hmm. against the evil that lurks. Amen. 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 Now, verse ten reads: Finally, my brothers. Now, Paul is speaking to the church. Say church. 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 Paul says, "My brethren." He's not t talking to religious people. He's talking to people that have a relationship with God. Amen. Amen. Ha have have a relationship with Christ and know what it is to be spirit filled. Amen. So finally, my brothers, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. Not the schemes of your ex-boyfriend. Mm -hmm. Not the schemes of H&R Block. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Not the schemes of, of whatever might be trying to get you to be sidetracked or knocked off the mark. Amen? For verse twelve, for our against, for our fight is not against flesh and blood. Look at somebody and say, our fight is not against flesh and blood. Our fight, fight is not, not against flesh, flesh and blood. blood. Now, we are not anointed to fight with each other in the physical. We are not anointed to fight with each other with uh, verbal abuse. Mm -hmm. We are not anointed to fight with each other like the world does. Mm -hmm. Amen. Are we okay with it? Amen. But against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, and against spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. So now you have a picture uh, of, of the heavenly place as the battle is going on right now. And not only just right now because we're we're uh, desiring to learn about God, but you, you, the battle is... Con constantly all day long mm -hmm. all yes. night long yes. even when we sleep the yes. battle is still going on yes. ever wake up wondering why you dreamt that amen amen, yeah. amen. ever ever woke up wondering why where where that came from yeah. mm -hmm. amen so the enemy even even though we're asleep he can still try and oh, sneak yeah. in amen. amen but thank thank god for grace amen, amen. Now verse 13 reads, Therefore take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to re resist in the evil day. How many know that there are going to be evil days? Amen. 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 There, there are going to be evil days. There are going to be uh, uh, evil things going on and, uh, throughout our day. And we have to uh, be able to resist the devil when he comes. Amen. Amen. And having done all to stand. Verse 14, Stand therefore having your waist girded with with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, having your feet fitted with the, the readiness of the gospel of peace, and above all, taking the shield of faith, which which you will be able to extinguish all the fiery arrows of the evil one. Mm. Amen. Verse 17, take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Verse 18, we pray in the spirit always, with all kinds of prayer, that's plural, all kinds mm. of prayer and supplication, to that end be alert with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Amen. It says pray in the Spirit with all kinds of prayer and supplication. Constantly praying in the Spirit. Some people might think, well, I have to be in my prayer closet for two hours. If you got that time, type of time... Good. But God wants us to have constant communication throughout the day. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Because the enemy is constantly bombing us throughout the day. 
constantly enticing us, con constantly tempting us, constantly uh, uh, trying to throw a wrench in our communication with God. Amen? Yeah. It might be somebody that might have just uh, ripped you off for your lunch and it, it might have been your favorite lunch and, and uh, you, you want to give them a piece of your mind. Amen? But if we continue to talk with God, amen, it'll keep us in the spirit. And the flesh will die. Yeah. Amen. It says right here, uh, taking up in verse 17, take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Amen. Taking up the helmet of salvation to keep your mind protected from ungodly thoughts. Ever had an ungodly thought? Oh, yeah. I probably had about 50 of them if, that I can count up just today. Yeah. If you're going to be honest. Come on. We're going to be honest, That's amen? Right. But the thing is, God is good where he can allow us not to act amen. on those ungodly thoughts, amen? amen. Let me, move, let me move, uh, move on with this. Now, how do we pray in the Spirit? We need to remove things that will hinder the Holy Ghost flow in our life. We need to shut down the phone, mm -hmm. turn off the TV. Mm -hmm. We need to put away all distractions. Get away in a quiet place. Mm -hmm. Maybe turn on some music, that, that uh, worship music, praise music that will get us tuned in, focused, and watching where we're amen. to be in prayer. Amen? Amen, Pastor. Amen? Preach it. Maybe you have yielded to the Spirit at one time in your life and you were filled. Ever been that way? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you're wondering, what happened? W where did I lose it? What's going on? Because of the cares of, of life will distract us and it'll, it'll begin to uh, kind of cover up what God has done in our life because we allow that at times. Amen. Amen. I say we now. Yeah. Amen. But, but God with his mercy and his grace and his compassion and his, and his ever, everlasting kindness, he will bring us back if we stand. Mm -hmm. Amen. What about today? Are you spirit-filled today? What about today? Are you spirit-filled today? What about each time you pray? Do you start in the flesh and finish in the spirit? So, questions for us to gauge our walk in. Amen? Amen. We, we can quench the spirit when we don't allow the spirit to move. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah. We can quench the spirit when, when we run program rather than God's plan. Mm -hmm. Agenda rather than God's plan. Come on. We can grieve the spirit when we start acting in the flesh. Amen. We can grieve the spirit when we start acting in the flesh. As a church, when we get together and we have disagreements, we'll grieve the spirit and fellowship if it becomes a carnal argument. Amen. That's right. That's a good word. Each time we come to pray, we need to check our lives. And how do you check your life? Check it's kind of like when you get, get in the car, you check the gas gauge, right? Yes, sir. Before we come to pray, check, check our lives and repent. Amen. Ask God for forgiveness. Forgive those that have, that have done wrong to us. Amen. So that way we are allowing a path for the Holy Ghost to come in. Ever prayed and prayed and prayed and struggled and just kind of gave up because you just couldn't tap in? Amen. Mm -hmm. It might have been because of unforgiveness. It might have been because of bitterness. It might have been uh, uh, because uh, we haven't cleaned the slate. We haven't repented. We haven't asked God to forgive us for our sins. Wow. Amen. And not that God doesn't want to communicate with us, but it's that we're, we have a blockage. We need to put a spiritual stent through that vein. Come on. So that God can, God can flow through us and, and clean our hearts. Amen? Amen. I struggle the same way too. In, in, in the Lord's Prayer, it says, Father, forgive us as we forgive those. So what we're saying is, you know, Lord, forgive me just the way I, I forgave so-and-so. Yeah. 
Does that make sense? Yes, yeah. sir. So you, God is going to forgive me to the degree that I forgive whoever is mm -hmm. trespassed against me. Now, do we want full forgiveness? Yes, sir. Then we got to forgive completely. Amen? Mm -hmm. yes, is this making sense? Yes, sir. So each time we come to pray, we need to check our lives. Repent. Ask for forgiveness. Forgive those. Clean the slate. That way God can flow. His spirit flows straight into us. Amen? Amen. Now, praying in the spirit means yielding ourselves to the spirit. The Holy Spirit must be allowed to flow. Why have why have a, a spiritual blockage if you're going to go to... You might not even start praying. Why even start to pray if you have a blockage? Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Why would we begin to try to pray if we're holding grudges, unforgiveness, bitterness, a vengeful spirit that blocks the Holy Spirit from working in our life. How many want the Holy Spirit to work in our life? Come on. The Holy Spirit works a lot better in our lives rather than our flesh. Right. We're never going to beat the, the evil ways of the enemy in the flesh. Right. Amen? Amen? So we, we must yield ourselves to the Spirit. The Holy Spirit must be allowed to flow. God only does things in this planet by His Spirit. And that Spirit only works through yielded vessels. Amen. And that Spirit only works to vessels that are willing to allow Him to move, flow, have His way, and do whatever He wants to do. Amen? Amen. Is this making sense? Amen. Now what does it mean to yield ourselves? Yielding means to give way. You see this you see the signs on the road where you're coming up on a on a corner and it says yield. What yield me to let the oncomer have its way. Yield means to let the Holy Ghost have its way to move on your behalf, on our behalf, on his behalf to to do what his work needs to be done. A lot of times we, we, we want him to yield, but we want him to yield to come around us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good word. The Holy Ghost must be in front of us. Mm -hmm. He's a teacher. He's, a, he's our guide. He's the leader. We have people in the church that lead us, but the Holy Spirit must lead the leader. <clears throat> Amen. A lot of times we want God to move, the, the Holy Spirit to move, but we want Him to follow us. Mm -hmm. Good word. It's not going to work. Okay? It means to allow. When you allow the, the Spirit of God to move, miracles can happen. Change will happen in our attitudes. Change will happen in our, in our lives. It means to give ourselves to. Remember we said, not my will, but your, your will be done. Yeah. So that means that the Holy Spirit says, I want you to go here. Then we go here. Well, I want to go over here first. Mm -hmm. No, he wants you to go here. Mm -hmm. He wants you to do this first. And probably talk to you about why you want to go here. Mm. Amen. Amen. It means to seek after. It means to focus on. If you focus on allowing God's spirit to, to flow, you won't be focusing on people's wrongdoing. Wow. Come on, preach that again, my brother. Amen? Yes, sir. If you focus on what the Holy Ghost wants to do in yours, my, our life, we don't focus on the wrongs that other people are doing. Good Amen. 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 Because the cross was put up high so that we could be focused on heavenly things. Mm -hmm. mm. Wow. When we drop our sight to sea level, all we do is see. see all we do is see right. in That's the great. natural. Faults, wrongdoings. Is this making sense? Yes, Yielding means 
to come under the anointing. Amen? Amen. To come under the anointing. The anointing keeps us focused. The anointing keeps us standing. The anointing keeps us thinking godly thoughts. Mm. Amen? Mm -hmm. Thinking godly thoughts. The, the more I grow, I, I, I realize that praise and worship is very vital to me. When I drive to work, I put Pandora on and I put traditional gospel on. So by the time I get to work, I'm flooded. 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 I'm sorry? Flooded with, with, with praise and worship in, in my mind. Mm -hmm. So when I go into work, I have a different mindset. Yeah, come on. Somebody might be babbling behind me, but I'm still focused on what I'm doing. I don't get sucked into that vacuum as easy as I did before. Come on. Amen. Mm -hmm. Because as you grow in the Lord, you're going to require, you're going to need, you're going to, you're going to desire more from mm -hmm. God than just a, 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 thank you God for waking me up this morning. I'm on my way. <laughs> yeah. You, you understand what I'm saying? As you grow older in the Lord, it, uh, the, and I'm not knocking those prayers. You know, I mean they they work, genuinely work. But when you're in spiritual warfare, it's going to be a lot more than that. Yeah. yeah. Amen. Mm -hmm. uh, spiritual warfare, you're going to have to fight to keep your mouth shut. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And right. in spiritual warfare, you're going to have to fight to open your mouth. That's right. Amen. Now, pictures of yieldness in the Bible. Pastor was teaching on this last, last Wednesday, I think it was, when he tells you to lift your hands. That teaching that he was teaching us really ministered to me because you know what? God is using pastor or whoever's up there to, to get us to submit so God can bless. Yes. God can heal. God can deliver. God can strengthen. God can, can redeem. God can restore. And God can rebuild. Mm -hmm. Pictures of yieldness in the Bible. Standing in a meeting. Some people don't stand. Mm -hmm. Maybe they have a physical disability. God understands that. But what if you can't, what if you can't stand and you don't stand? How do you know that God's not going to deliver you when you stand? Mm. Kneeling and praying. Some people don't kneel. Some people do. Amen. Humbling yourselves under the hand of a mighty God. Mm. He's not one of them kings on the earth. He's the almighty king of kings. Yeah. Amen. I guarantee if he was here in the flesh, we would bow. Mm -hmm. yeah. The Bible says that every knee shall bow yeah. and every tongue shall confess. Amen. Now we're either going to bow and I choose to believe that everybody in this classroom and everybody that is learning on this on social media is going to bow joyfully. Yes, you are king. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then there are some that are going to bow grudgingly and say, yes, you are king. Mm. Grudgingly. Wow. But they will bow. Wow. We get the, the, the privilege and the, and the honor to bow joyfully and say, yes, you are my king. Amen. You are my lord. But some are not going to be bowing joyfully. Some will bow grudgingly. Because it was spiritual warfare. Closing our eyes in prayer. God may want to give us a picture of what we're praying about. A vision. Amen. Or maybe coming forward. You've had a tug in your heart to come forward, but what, what do people think? I don't care what people think. I don't. I don't care. If God pulls on me, I got to go. You know, somebody follows me, great. But I, I need to be fixed. Anybody else? Come on. Amen. 
Well, we got to serve. I, I got to go forward. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Jesus healed all who came to him. Jesus healed and he still heals all who come to him. And there's spiritual warfare there because in the seats, in the streets, come unto me. And what, what do people think? What do people think that if they find out that I'm born again? What do people think if uh, they find out that, that, that I'm, I'm serving the Lord? What, what, what do people think? It doesn't matter what people think. See, that's a spiritual warfare right there in the mind. What will people think? Not everybody's going to celebrate your new life. Mm -hmm. Not everybody will celebrate, but we will celebrate. That's why we have a new family. Amen? Amen. Jesus healed all who came to him, <laughs> marching around the walls of Jericho, <coughs> Moses holding his hands up in battle, and all through scriptures we see these examples. If we are to yield ourselves to the Spirit, we must give ourselves totally to Him. We must give up. Give Him everything. Amen? We must, in Proverbs 3, 5, uh, uh, 3, 6, it says, acknowledge all your ways to the Lord and He'll help you. Mm -hmm. When you give yourself, you're saying, you know what, I have a rotten attitude. He said, in all your ways, acknowledge him. I'm not feeling too good today. I don't feel very Christian-y today. I don't feel like going to church today. I don't feel like going to Bible study today. I don't feel like praying. In all your ways, acknowledge him. He already knows. He wants you to confess. He wants us to tell him how we're feeling. And it's spiritual warfare. No, I'm a leader. I can't. I can't ask anybody to pray for me. That's a lie from the pit of hell. Yeah, it is. It is. The devil will tell you you're you're a leader. You're you're you're, you're anointed. You're a Christian. You've been born again for five years. You've been born again for twenty years. You yeah you you know you, you have the whole Bible memorized. Uh, you you. You, you give, you tie, you do all this. You don't need people to pray for you. You don't need to tell anybody that you need to be accountable. And it's spiritual warfare. Amen? Do, you under, do we understand that? It's spiritual warfare. You, and when you step out and you ask somebody that you can trust to pray for you and, and tell them, God can move. And you've defeated the enemy. Amen? Yes. Is this making sense? Yes. Amen. Praying in the Spirit means to be led by the Spirit. Praying in the Spirit means to be led in the Spirit. When we act, think carnally, we're led carnally. Mm -hmm. yep. Ever thought carnally? Then you, you're led carnally. Maybe somebody did wrong to your kid or, or, or to your spouse or to a friend. And, and right away, what's the first thing we want to do? Pray? No. Get even. So we act carnally. When we see them, we give them the cold shoulder. That's carnal. Mm. Right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> we, <laughs> we go the other way. Amen? It, it is the Holy Spirit's job to speak, not our job. Yeah. We just have to yield to the Spirit of God Amen. so He can speak. Because our facial expressions say a lot. They sure do. That our facial expressions say a lot. That person might not think, know what you're saying, but God already knows. And you know yourself. Mm -hmm. Amen? Yes, sir. <clears throat> Time out. So we must, we must let the Holy Ghost lead us in our prayers. Yes, sir. You know what a carnal prayer is? 
how you pray, Father, just get even with them. Yeah. <laughs> get them fired. Even wishing that, asking God to kill. Ever done that? I have. For years I did. And God began to check my heart. And talk to me. Do you really want justice? Do you really want me to do what you're asking to do? Because if I do it to them, then you deserve the same thing. And he began to change my heart. God can work in your heart. Mm -hmm. Rather than hating, we pray. God gives you his son's eyes to see how sad, how, how desperate somebody can be when they're lost. No matter if they have all the money and they drive a nice car and have a swimming pool. Amen. God will do that to you if you let him. Amen. Amen. And, but it takes heart work. It takes yielding to the Holy Spirit. Amen. So we must let him lead us in our prayers. What impresses God and the devil is to be led by the Spirit in our prayers. And why is the devil impressed? Because when we are led by the Spirit, he can't touch it. Amen. Amen. Because he hears our prayers too. Oh, yeah. And when he's hearing us say, get, tell God to get even, well, he just sitting there just going, yes. That person's not, not even in love with God. Amen. Go to Romans 8.26. Romans 8.26. Romans 8.26 Ever felt weak in your prayer? Amen. Not knowing what to pray, how to pray, mm -hmm. not, not, not really being able to tune in? Thank God we have a spirit that can help us. Amen? Amen. Amen. And it's not just a spirit, but it's the Holy Spirit that helps us. Verse 26 reads, Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weaknesses. Anybody weak? Come on. Anybody ever been weak? We've got the Holy Ghost to help us in our weakness. Come on. To teach us, to, to guide us, to direct us, and to intercede for us as we groan. Amen. For we do not know what to pray for as we ought, but the Spirit Himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. He who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is because he intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. Amen. Amen. We know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. So we are not forgotten even though we struggle in prayer. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit knows we're struggling. He knows we have a hard time. He knows that we're tempted. He knows that we have trials and tr uh, problems and tribulation. Amen. But but the Holy Ghost is there to intercede, to guide us, to, to direct us, to lead us when we allow Him to do the work that He wants to do. Is this okay? Amen. Yes. Amen. So the Holy Spirit does want to show us what to pray. Now illustrations from Scripture. Marching around the walls of Jericho. That was that was God ordained to march around the walls of Jericho. Amen? That was God ordained. Gideon's army. Amen? Jonathan and his armor bearer. David went out by himself and Jehoshaphat led the choir in warfare. Mm -hmm. Most of the ways they fought in the Old Testament, they only did one time. One time. You know why God only does it one time? Because he doesn't want his people saying, he did that before. Hmm. I know what he's going to do. He did that before. Because that's how we are as people. We already know. We've seen the movie. Oh, I remember seeing that before. 
God wants to show you something new every time he moves on our behalf. Amen. Amen. You guys didn't get that, huh? God wants to show us something new every time he moves on our behalf. Amen. We're peculiar people where we're trying to outthink God and figure him out how he's going to do what he's going to do. Maybe it's a provision. Maybe it's a healing in the body. Maybe it's a reconciliation of, uh, of a loved one. Amen? Amen? So most of the ways they fought in the Old Testament, they only did it one time. The lessons from these illustrations is that God is saying, listen to me. Quit listening to the media. Quit listening to your neighbor. Quit listening to your brother and sister if they're babbling too. That's right. Amen? I will change it every time. God will change us every time if we allow him to. Praying in the Spirit is being led by the Spirit. He leads us to subjects and details of a subject that we already know. A burden for a country or a person. A burden for maybe skid row. A burden for drug addicts. A burden for homeless. That's how God will lead us if we have a burden mm -hmm. for that. Amen. And you, you might be wondering, why do I feel this way? Why do I, why do I feel? It's God leading you because that's the burden that he's given you. Wherever it is to, to help out. Mm -hmm. Maybe rehab centers. Maybe, uh, what is it, convalescent homes, shut-in ministry, prison ministry. That burden, God will guide you through the Holy Spirit on what to do. Amen? Amen. Maybe praying for someone sick. We do hospital visits. It's a burden on us. God leads us how to pray for people. Amen? Praying specifically in details for things we do not know about. Praying in the Spirit uh, is a, to allow the Holy Ghost to energize and empower our prayer. Ever got real tired, real sleepy when you start praying? Yeah. And you just nod out? Mm -hmm. The disciples did too when Jesus was in the garden. Wow. He did too. Amen. But praying in the Spirit allows us to be energized. Amen. Amen. When you witness, I believe it allows you to be energized. The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is not a tranquilizer. That's right. The Holy Ghost is not a tranquilizer. He's not a barbiturate. Where you nod out. The Holy Spirit will revive you, refresh you, and energize you. Amen. Yeah. Amen. 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 Are we okay with it? Yes. That's why I, I really strongly recommend that wherever you can, you you engage in spiritual warfare and tell somebody about the goodness of God. Amen. Tell somebody what Jesus has done for you. Yeah, you might be going through hell. You might you might have a mountain of problems, but they, those can become hills of blessings. Mm -hmm. right. Amen. Amen. As you as you testify, as you pray for people, as you witness to people, that's spiritual warfare too. Because you know what, the enemy does not. He doesn't mind that you're saved, but he just wants you to keep it to yourself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like hanging a cross around your neck. Nobody sees it. You can mm -hmm. be a Christian, but mm -hmm. don't tell nobody. You can, you can love God, but don't tell nobody what God's done for you. That's spiritual warfare. Because you'll have a burden to share with somebody at maybe the car lot or, or maybe at McDonald's or the Crazy Chicken and wherever, wherever you go eat. Maybe Douglas. And while you're getting your chili cheese fries, you let the owner know that, that, that about God's goodness and and that he's healed you, and that's why you can have chili cheese fries now. is because God has healed you. Amen. 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 But the enemy will try to get you to shut your mouth when God is already moving on you to share. Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. The bibl biblical picture of prayer is like a wind or a flow of water. 
And why is this support important? A great, great wind of evil is blowing over our society right now. Even more now. We've got Moab being dropped and we've got flops in North Korea and we've got, you know, Facebook murders and I'm not putting it on blast, but that's crazy. That is crazy stuff, amen? The only way we will drive back the enemy and release God's kingdom is through the power of praying in the Spirit. Do you know that praying in the Spirit will keep you out of the flesh? Amen. Yeah. Amen. You cannot satisfy your flesh and walk in the Spirit. You cannot be anointed and Spirit-filled and knock somebody out. Okay, I'll say that again. You cannot be Spirit-filled anointed and throw a karate chop on somebody. <laughs> Amen? It doesn't work. It doesn't work. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. <laughs> Amen? Praying in the spirit includes praying in tongues, but it is broader than that. It also includes praying in a known language, led and empowered by the spirit. Have you ever been so angry in prayer that you just let her rip? Amen. Yeah. And you, you know your neighbors heard, or maybe the car next to you heard, or maybe you were in the restroom at work and your boss heard. That's how the, the kingdom of God suffers violent and the violent take it by force. And how do you force? You force spirit-led prayers to bombard the, 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 the gates of hell. Come on. Amen. Amen. Now the concept... The concepts of the church in spiritual warfare. Let's go to Matthew 16, verse 18 and 19. How are we doing? Are we okay? Yes. You guys are really quiet tonight. Matthew 16, 18 through 19. Let's go to verse 17 for you. We there? Amen. Jesus answered him. Aren't you glad Jesus answers you? Amen. Yes. That didn't sound very convincing. Yes. I'm glad when he answers me. Come on. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you. The flesh man will not have it revealed. Carnal will not be revealed. Amen? Amen. Amen. Carnal, me. Amen? But my Father who is in heaven, and I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of, of hate shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Then he command, commanded his disciples to tell no one that he was Jesus the Christ. The focus is upon the church. People are watching the church right now, wondering what the church is doing. Not just destiny, but the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. Amen. What is God doing in the world? They want to see what God is doing in the world. God is building his church. And not only is he building his church, but he's getting the body to become one unit. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. when, we, when we leave, if Christ decides to rapture us, mm -hmm. the leg is not the only thing going. Right? Got it. Mm -hmm. Okay. The body is going to go. Yeah. Yeah. The whole body. The whole body. Amen? So that should be our focus. The place of focus for the church, the gates of hell. In Matthew 16, 18. This talks about the spirit realm. Jesus said he would give the church the keys of the kingdom. Keys speak of authority. Yep. Keys speak of authority. Yep. Amen. Amen. Keys mean that you are have power, that you've been authorized, that you have the, the, the green light to cast out devils, heal the sick, raise the dead, right. raise the dead, 
Come on. Hey, we got some dead family members right now, amen? Mm -hmm. and, and, and as long as we keep those keys in our pockets, nobody's going to raise up. Come hmm. on. Amen? As long as we keep the keys in our pocket, the bum out there is not going to know what God That's is right. That's doing. Right. Amen? Jesus said he would give the church the kingdom, the keys of the kingdom. You can have all the keys to this building here. It ain't going to get you there. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. You, you, go, you go up to a homeless person and say, look, I hear I got pastors. I go to that church over there, Uptown Whittier, and I got the pastor's office keys. What's he going to tell you? So. 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 Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But if you go up to him and say, silver and gold I have not. Come on. But I have something for you. Mm -hmm. And we can go eat. And I'll tell you a little bit more. Now that's authority. Yes. Yeah. Amen? Mm -hmm. But these keys, they're going to burn. That's right. These keys aren't getting in there. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? Keys speak of authority. You have keys to your car. Not everybody has keys to your car. Mm -hmm. No one does. Right? Only those that are authorized. Yeah. You, you have a PIN number to your account. Not everybody has a PIN number to your account. Mm -hmm. Hopefully. Mm -hmm. The analogy of gate. This is the promise made to Abraham in Genesis 22. Believers as part of the seed of Abraham are to possess the gate of their enemies. When you possess the gate, that means you do not allow your enemies to advance on you. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. We have... Fences and gates and doors in our house, right? Yeah, yeah. To keep out intruders. intruders. Amen? Yes, sir. If we go a little bit more into an example, you shut the gate so the animals don't come into your yard, and if you have animals, disrupt your animals, or maybe you don't want them going on your lawn. Mm -hmm. Right? Is that, does this make sense? Yeah. That's why you shut the gate to all the outsiders. Yeah. Amen? Amen? Is this making sense? You guys are looking at me funny. It's good. Good word. Gates are where people come in and go out. Your heart has a gate. Your mind has a gate. Your yeah. ears yeah. have gates. Yeah. Your eyes have gates. Yeah. You're talking about spiritual warfare. Right. Every gate mm -hmm. must be shut from the enemy. Mm. The gate of hate, the gate of lust, mm. the gate of fornication, mm. the, the, the gate of envy, the gate of revenge, mm. the gate of gossip, mm. the gate of late night yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Come on. Come on. Amen. Amen. So you get we're getting the picture, right? Amen. Amen. Gates are where people come in and go out. Mm -hmm. The most asked question today is, how does the devil gain access? Gates were the part of the city, of the city where decisions were made. Go to Proverbs thirty one twenty three. I gotta hurry. Proverbs 31, 23. Are you there? Yes. Proverbs 31, 23. The elders sat in the gate. Amen? Yeah. Her husband is known in the gates. When he sits among the elders of the land... She makes fine linen and sells it. What they're trying to say is the elders sat at the gate and the elders checked who was coming through that gate. And he was check the elders would check those that were going out because some maybe that, that were going out shouldn't have been going out because they weren't going to come back. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. The, the, the enticement, the temptation, the, the, the draw of the world will cause people 
to go out the gate of the sheep pen. Amen? So this gives us an understanding of where we are to point when we do spiritual warfare. We should be focusing on the gates. Mm -hmm. On the gates. Where is the gate? It's where the enemy gets in. Nothing aggravates me more to see my gate open when I get up in the morning to go to work. I'm serious. And that's how I am spiritually too. We put, God puts boundaries around where we live, around where we go, and gates to keep Pestilence, disease, everything that can destroy a, a person of God from being ruined. Mm -hmm. It's not that, it's not, God is not doing that to keep us from anything. He's doing that to protect us. Mm -hmm. You lock your car when you leave. Now they make it so easy with the new cars, they lock automatically. You don't even have to lock it. They lock automatically. Why? To keep you safe from somebody coming in. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. It is a place of decision making inside the gate. And now ask yourself, how much is the enemy doing in your city? How much is the enemy able to do in your family? How much is the devil doing in the world? These are just questions that you can sit and think about and God will lead you to pray. He is doing as much as people allow him to do by their decisions. The enemy cannot do anything unless you allow him if you choose to let him do it. It's our choice. Mm -hmm. Make right. good choices. Making good cho choices. That is the most important thing we can understand about spiritual warfare. Do not be worried about the devil's power. Be worried about your decisions. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to worry about your decision if you're making the right decision. Yeah. And if you're led by the Holy Ghost, you will make the right decision. If you're led by your flesh or your feelings, your emotions, or, 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 or people's actions, you will make the wrong decision. We are the ones who give the enemy power. We can also stop his power. People in the occult and those that are evil have to yield themselves to evil spirit. We do not allow ourselves to yield to evil spirits. Mm. Amen? Amen? They know where the doorway is. That is where we do spiritual warfare. We focus on people because they are the decision makers. I'm almost done. What do you do with the gates? You open the gates, you shut the gates. We are to be involved in these two kinds of affairs. Shutting gates is defensive warfare. For ourselves, this is for believers. Opening gates is offensive warfare. Go into the, all the world, the Great Commission. And what are the gates we can focus on in defensive warfare? The mind. When we open the gates, it's to go into the world. When we shut the gates, it's to protect our mind. Come on. This is the biggest battleground in spiritual warfare. The enemy fills our minds with thoughts of lust, pride, unbelief, fear, inferiority, and condemnation. And all believers fight with these things. Now go to 2 Corinthians 10, 3 and 5, and, and I'm closing with this. The mind is a battlefield. If we're worn out in our mind, it causes our body to get sick. Second Corinthians 10, 3 and 5. I, I can feel myself when I'm bombarded in my mind. All of a sudden, I don't feel good anymore. 
I have no energy. I'm drained physically, drained emotionally, and I just, my tolerance is zero for anything. One of those places is Costco that causes me to get that way. Amen? Nothing against Costco. They got great stuff. Just don't take me there. I try. I try to be delivered from that. But. Verse, verse, verse 3. Though, for though we walk in the flesh. Come on. Why do we walk in the flesh? Because the spirit man needs housing to exist here on earth and live. That's why we walk in the flesh. flesh. We do not war according to the flesh. We don't fight according to the flesh because we go around punching people. Right? Mm -hmm. oh, none of you want to punch anybody. Okay, good. Verse 4. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. When the enemy starts to get your mind and start to build a stronghold, you've got to cast them down. Yes, sir. You've got to fight in the spirit, though. That's right. You cannot do it in the flesh. Mm -hmm. Amen? God, to, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God. Amen. To the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imagination. Because we can imagine. Ooh, we can imagine the, the fish stories. <laughs> the fish stories. We can make big stories out of... Right? All it was was a scratch on the car and all of a sudden we had a tow truck there. <laughs> and all it was was a scratch. Come on now. Amen. Well, Casting true. down imagination and every high thing that is exalt raises itself against the knowledge of God, against your knowledge of God. Bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. When you bring that thought into captivity in the spirit you bring it to Christ so that he can punish it amen because of obedience and being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is complete you've got to obey we have amen. to obey amen? Amen. amen that is spiritual warfare we open the gates to go into the world we shut the gate to protect our mind. Amen. To the world. Amen. Amen. That's Good the word of the Lord tonight. That's part three. Let's all stand. What's your Good word, Pastor. Bobby Corral.